Hello guys, welcome to another exciting episode of Amir Meets. And today, I meet one of your favorites, you know. I'm going to go on YouTube and you want to learn how to cook most of the amazing Ghanaian food. She's like uh, one of the go-to pe persons on YouTube and beyond. So stick and stay, we find out who I'm speaking with today. <laughs> Welcome back. Sweet Ajele. Yes. Ofane, Akwaba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nia. Hey, I did it. Good, good, good. <laughs> so you're back in Ghana. You came for vacation? No. I was invited by Echo House oh, good. for the Around the World Food and Drink Festival. Cool. Actually, I saw you there where they put pressure on me to <laughs> test yes. my knife skills. How, how did I do? You did excellent. I'm Thank impressed. You. Thank you. You know, I'm here, I can cook. Anyway, I have a, a content called I'm here, a series called I'm here, I Can Cook, where I, I actually cook. So go and watch a few of those episodes and rate my, my cooking will. as well. And when was the last time, I mean, you came to Ghana? I was just here about two months ago cool. oh, okay. um, for vacation with my husband. Oh, oh, cool. So you are somebody who comes quite, yes. quite regularly. Mm -hmm. How did it start for you, this YouTube culture? Um, YouTube, I was a stay-at-home mom for... Mm -hmm a long time but because i went to restaurant school i started off doing home economics and then i went to restaurant school a family friend told me to start putting my recipes on youtube instead of always typing mm -hmm. everything for everybody i'll just send a link so that's how it all started do you remember the first video you did i actually didn't film well i filmed but i wasn't in the first video it was my daughter oh, she good. made plantain chips <laughs> and we posted it and then that was how we got started i'm shy so i used her oh cool <laughs> so is she now part of the core team when it comes to producing these videos that we see she helps a lot sometimes i'll call her to look at the thumbnail which one should i use this or that mm -hmm. And yeah, that's about it. And then she, she introduced me to TikTok because that's okay. where she is. That's yeah, her house. Yeah, yeah. So you do TikTok? <laughs> I, I recent, well, I started, she created it for me a year ago, mm -hmm. but I just wasn't having it. I couldn't just put my videos under a minute. And so I said, forget it. <laughs> but then about a month ago, she told me, oh, mommy, now you can do three minutes. Mm -hmm. And I said, I can work with yeah. that. Mm -hmm. At that time, I had about 400 followers. So I tried to do the three minutes, and then somehow I started doing that one minute. Mm -hmm. And now we are nearly 300,000 followers cool. there. Cool. Cool. Adela is sweet. Everywhere she goes, she gets all the nice people uh, uh, following. You. you talked about your first video. So from that point to this point, uh, what has been the journey like, uh, the learnings, the challenges? Uh, because you realize people will see a successful channel like yours and they are inspired to go and do the same. And it, it, they will struggle to build that audience yeah. and attention and probably pull out. So using yourself and the journey you went through, can you share some of these uh, oh, yeah. stories? YouTube especially. I think you can easily grow on Facebook, mm -hmm. but YouTube... When I was a year old on YouTube, I had like 395 subscribers and I had been there for one year. You post a video and a month later, you just have 100 views. You just don't give up mm -hmm. because um, what I used to do, if I get 100, when I got 100 subscribers, I was like, one, two, three, four, five, mm -hmm. 100 people like me. When I get 100 views, I'll be like, 100 people watched my video, and I don't know 100 people on a, a regular no, day. Indeed. So when you start counting from 1 to 100, it can take you up to 10 minutes mm -hmm. to count. So it takes a lot for somebody to watch you and come back and watch you again. Mm -hmm. So every view counts. Right. Some people, they may be getting 20 views, 100 views and they're discouraged. Even I get discouraged sometimes. But the plan is not to quit because half bread is better than none. So as long as you have people engaging, say I post my video and I always see your comments, I'm posting for you. 
the people that I haven't met or haven't commented yet, they don't matter. Mm -hmm. Because when it gets to them and they see you and they love you, they will stay, they will start to comment. So always put your content out for the people that are looking forward to what you post, not the millions of views. When you, when you look at Ghanaian food, we only have so many. But for you to consistently come up with recipes all the time, what goes into your mind? What do you usually want to achieve each time you're producing content uh, out there? So I'm hoping to help anybody out there that doesn't know how to cook, because believe it or not, there are people that don't know how to cook. It used to be cooking was for women, mm -hmm. but it's no longer like that. Now, if you're a man, you're in Ghana, some woman is cooking for you all the time, and then you travel out and you're by yourself. Are you going to be eating out every day? Are you going to be buying fast food? No. You want to be able to cook something. Mm -hmm. So my goal is to get everybody from the age you're able to cook to be able to cook. Some people have parents that are working. Mm -hmm. They are unable to sit their child down, say, cut the onions this way, put it in the oil at this stage, add salt at this stage, you know. Because something like beans, you can't start cooking beans with salt immediately. You'll mm -hmm. be cooking it forever. Mm -hmm. You have to allow the beans to soften before you add in your salt. Mm -hmm. So as a child, if your mother didn't teach you that, mm -hmm. I'm here to do that. Good. So there's a lot of lessons to be learned, not mm -hmm. just the cooking, not but just, yeah. good. And you talked about men cooking. People say that men are the better cooks, better chef. Do you agree? Um, men have a lot of passion when they're doing something that they're not supposed to do, especially African men. They're not expected to cook. So when a man cooks and it tastes good and people enjoy it, it encourages them to cook more. For instance, my grandfather was the best cook I know. He always cooked for us. So today, my brother is one of the best cooks I know. So to me, when men cook, they, they want to impress us. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they cook better. From what you just said, it seems you are coming from a family with a lineage that they cook a lot. Yes. Uh, so how has that helped you? Um, well, growing up, nobody really sat me down to say, I'm teaching you how to cook. It's about fanning the fire, fetching the water, grinding the pepper. So as you do those things, you're watching. And I grew up in the 80s, so it's like you have to be in the kitchen. So you'll be playing, and it's time to cook. And the boys can still play, but the girls have to come. But we had a number of girls. So if I found today, tomorrow is your turn. <laughs> yeah, so I had my auntie Odoko, who was the one that did most of the cooking. So she taught us how to cook. So by the time I was 10 years old, I was already cooking. Great. One good thing about being a content creator is you're able to build a community. Mm -hmm. And uh, being someone who is building content around food, um, what questions do you often get? What are things that people really want to learn how to cook uh, uh, in your community? So for, for the ladies, especially in Ghana, I see that most some of them struggle with tomato stew. You know, Ghanaians, we eat a lot of tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Everything we cook have tomatoes in it. But at times, the tomatoes can be sour. Mm -hmm. So it's quite a challenge for some of our Ghanaian young ladies to be confident in themselves because they know, I watched Sweet Ajele, I did everything she told me to do, but the stew is still sour. But um, I just want them to know that that is not their fault. At times, it is the sourness of the tomato. It's not that you did something wrong. And with that, you can fix it with a little bit of baking soda. You put it in there, and it takes away the sourness. And, but because we're in Ghana, some people use salt pita, can't we? Can't yeah, but you have to. Some people overdo it. Just a little bit goes a long way. So. That's, that's the biggest challenge mm -hmm. I think some of the young ladies are having. And with the years of creating this content, what has been your most memorable highlight? So I'll say that it was my beef sauce. Mm -hmm. Beef sauce, I um, made that about three years ago. 
people were asking for bee sauce, so I made it the way I knew best, which is not the Chinese way. So it had no soy sauce. It was just my own creation that I made, and it kind of went viral, and apparently it was trending number 20 something on Ghana something. But I know nothing about this web and mm -hmm, all these mm -hmm. you things. You just do your so stuff. I just do it. So it was memorable for me because I feel like it is what, really brought me up because a lot a lot of people were seeing it in Ghana mm -hmm. and they started subscribing so I went from having about 1500 um, subscribers to 30,000 subscribers mm -hmm. in about a week and that was really amazing I can never forget that fantastic so cooking all these years what what is your favorite things to cook well because um, groundnut soup which we call peanut butter soup. It's my husband's favorite. I've mastered it. So it's my favorite thing to cook. <laughs> your, your not so favorite things to cook. Some things you want um, to stay away from. I don't cook them at all. So <laughs> I don't like making kukunti mm -hmm. because it, hmm, no. <laughs> hey, <watch on. laughs> the, 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 Traditional method mm -hmm. always ends up with lumps in it. I don't care how good you are. With us outside Ghana, we don't have the stability mm -hmm. of the yeah, that, that is there and the hook Hopefully. and the two hands. Mm -hmm. At times you have somebody pouring mm -hmm. and you're doing mm -hmm. it. You're doing this and you're doing that at mm -hmm. the same time. So most of the time you end up, I've figured out a way by using a sift. So that helps a lot. Mm -hmm. But I don't like cooking kukunte. And because of that, my kids don't like don't it. Like it. Uh, talking about uh, cooking abroad, living abroad, cooking for your family, and even now doing cooking shows on YouTube, how difficult is it now to get uh, the best of ingredients? And how do you source them? Um, it's really not difficult for me to get certain ingredients. But like, I love contemporary stew, but I can't get contemporary in, in the US. So we use spinach. <laughs> It's the same exact thing, but then whenever I'm in Ghana, I want to have that contemporary feel. So the hardest things for me to get at times is certain vegetables because I couldn't get momoni, so I figured <laughs> out a way to make momoni. I couldn't that? get Kobe, so I figured out Show a way us to how make you do your momoni. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the person that taught me said that you're supposed to keep the momoni in a hot, I mean the fish in a hot place so that it will rot. And then after rotting, <laughs> you add salt, but I couldn't. So I started with the salt. So my, my process took a longer period of time, but I preferred that to knowing that this fish is rotten and I'm about to eat it. So it's not, yours is not so rotten, but you get the You get the fermented, the yes, yes. It. And I also started, instead of leaving it out to rot, if you put fish in your refrigerator, it will still go bad. So I'd rather put it in a refrigerator for it to go bad than salt it, rather than leave it outside. I cannot stand creepy crawlers, especially maggots and earthworms, I don't want to open any fish and find a surprise, no. I agree with you. <laughs> While you're here, what are some of the things you've been doing before you go back? Um, right now, I'm just relaxing because the festival is over. I just wanted to catch up with family a little bit, see my nieces and nephews. I'm not a really going out type of person. Believe it or not, I was in a club the other day and I was falling asleep. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, you know, I, I like staying inside and it's what I do have become a part of me. So mm -hmm. I'm always working, editing a video, filming a video. So even when I'm in Ghana, at times I try to film the things mm -hmm. that I'm unable to film over there, but this time around, I haven't done anything. I just want to rest a bit. So you film and edit yourself? Mm -hmm. I film, I edit. Self-taught? Everything. I have to try and learn <laughs> that, so that I don't need this <laughs> forward head. <laughs> All right, so now, uh, wrapping up, what's in the future for you? What should we look forward to? 
So I'm looking forward, I'm working on getting a dehydrator here so that I can start making my seasoning because mm -hmm. I have my own seasoning line. Okay. But most of the people are in Ghana, they're looking for it. If I try to make it there and bring it here, it'll be too expensive, expensive. for them. And I want it to be affordable to all. That's you should cool. be able to have one sweet agile spice in every household so that, you know. Fantastic. <laughs> and I also recently started a new vlogging channel. It's called Sweet Agile's Corner, where you can see my life, mm -hmm. that I'm not stiff, I'm a little free, I'm <laughs> jovial, just get to know me type of channel. Good. So she's starting a new channel, that means you're making a lot of money. We forgot to cover that part. <laughs> <laughs> the money is good. It's good. The mm -hmm. money, I cannot complain. Mm -hmm. It can be better than a nine to five, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. is it something you can fully rely on? No, because it's, mm -hmm. you never know. Uh, no. okay. Yeah, and then Facebook or YouTube can take down your channel That's at any channel. time. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a backup plan. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. this blogging channel too would allow me to be able to share like brands that have mm -hmm. been asking mm -hmm. to, for me to mention or mm -hmm. share their stuff. I feel like with food, I wanna start and get it over with. I don't wanna start saying, oh, do you, want, do you wanna know where I got my outfit? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, cause most of the time, as you know, I don't even show myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But with that, I can wear a brand like I'm wearing now and say, oh, I got this outfit from here. Mm -hmm. Check them out, this is their number. So that's also part of the reason that I started this new channel. Fantastic, we wish you all the very best. Thank and you. Uh, I'm going to end today's show with her using her signature uh, signing out. So that we wrap up. So over to you, Ajele. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this sit down with Ameyao. Until I'm able to pop up on his channel again, stay safe, keep loving each other, and remember that the love of God and family is life's greatest blessing. And guys, ke onamini uchemi suite mahabutu. Bye, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.